Alex here. It's been a while since I've been on the channel, so I'm excited to be back. And I thought I would kick off my return with a recent graph makeover. Now this makeover is memorable for me because it leverages a chart type that I typically don't use very often. Now the example that I'm referring to hails from the people analytics space. More specifically, it is a funnel chart that shows reasons employees decided to leave an organization for a given time period. Now I can't lie, this funnel chart, it looks pretty cool. We have this nice, interesting shape from the funnel itself, a bold, bright red color. That said, a funnel chart doesn't quite make sense for the underlying data. So let's remake this. And to guide me in my design decisions, I'm going to leverage the where your eyes drawn test. It's a very straightforward concept where all I do is look away and then glance back at my graph. And I take notice of where my eyes go first and then I wanna ask myself, does that make sense? Why do I think I looked there? So the first time that I did this test, I noticed that my attention was drawn but to the white space between the category labels and the bars. Now it was very rare, but I happened to have a few people around me this day when I was designing this graph. And so I asked for their input and I got a few different responses here. The first person said their attention was drawn to the top of the funnel, so the longer bars. Second person mentioned they looked first at the white data markers in the middle of the funnel. Third person had a similar experience as I did, and they looked at the white space between the bars and the category labels. And then the fourth person said they noticed the shape of the funnel mostly. So that T-shaped funnel, they viewed it as a single element. Now, if we take a look at each of these responses, there's a lot that we can learn. So let's start off with where I looked first, which is that white space between the bars and the category names. Now, in the same way that something that's visually cluttered can be incredibly attention grabbing, the opposite of that is also true. When you have a bunch of negative or empty white space that's surrounded by other elements, it can draw your attention in. And that's what's going on here. So to avoid this, all we have to do is play with the alignment. I'm gonna take the ends of the bars and I'm gonna left align them on a consistent baseline. And then I'm going to take those category names and I'm gonna write justify things. And now we no longer have any sort of trapped white space. Not only does this look cleaner, but we've now actually transitioned from a funnel chart to a standard horizontal bar chart. And if we think about it, this is a fantastic switch. A funnel chart works well for progressions. So when you're trying to showcase how many people move through the hiring process or how many customers have made it all the way through your sales funnel, a funnel chart can work well for that as they show each stage. But in this case, when we're just comparing employee attrition data, it doesn't quite make sense. So a standard bar chart is certainly going to be more appropriate. Next, let's chat about how someone viewed the entire funnel as a single entity. Now we no longer have the funnel itself, but you can imagine somebody might see all of these bars as a single shape. And instead of a T shape, now they're seeing this F shape. This is happening because the bars are so tightly packed together that if you squint, you basically only see a single element. Now this could work to your advantage if you're trying to convey the shape of your data. In this case, it doesn't quite make sense and we want someone to be reading this chart and viewing each reason individually. So I'll make a minor adjustment here just to increase the amount of space between those bars. Makes it a little less likely that somebody's going to view the entire shape. Next, what I will address are the data markers. Now I like that somebody was looking at them and anytime you use data markers, know that they're going to draw attention from your audience when they're scanning your graph. But you wanna be mindful of where you place them. So by putting them in the middle of this graph, we're drawing attention to the middle of the bars. Instead, we could use this to our advantage by moving them to the ends of the bars. And now we're encouraging our audience as they read the graph to scan the entire length of those bars left to right. That said, while I like these data labels, I'm a little wary of them. Anytime I'm communicating data from the people analytics space, I'm always mindful of data sources. Oftentimes there are multiple data sources and these data sources don't always align with one another. So if you're communicating precise numbers as we have here, it might encourage the person on the receiving end to start doing some math and maybe start to question how things tie together. For that reason, I often avoid precise numbers like this and instead I'll just remove those data markers and opt for a horizontal x-axis. Now one of the downsides is that once I saw those data markers at the ends of the bars, I liked them, I grew attached to them, and I wanted to draw attention to that area in a similar way. 
So this gave me the thought that maybe I don't want to use a bar chart. Maybe instead I could replace those bars with lines and dots, ultimately creating a lollipop chart. A lollipop chart can be a great alternative to a bar chart. One of the things I like about this lollipop chart is that attention is now drawn where I want it, but it also captures the spirit of the original funnel chart. I can only imagine that somebody created a funnel chart just to do something a little bit different, give people something new to look at that isn't just your typical bar chart. And so the nice thing about the lollipop chart is it has that novel effect, but it's still read the same way that a bar chart is. So that's my makeover going from funnel chart all the way to a lollipop chart. And I use the results of my where your eyes drawn test to help guide me in this process. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to watch more videos where we use the where your eyes drawn test, check out this playlist here where you can see myself, other colleagues using this test to remake more real world examples. My name's Alex and I will see you in the next video.